Welcome to the Bladed Tech Channel's 62nd installment of our Milestones Anthology on the history of technology and space exploration, and our fifth segment on the SpaceX Starship Interplanetary Spacecraft Program, and more specifically, the Serial 9 suborbital flight and the new spacecraft's full booster and main stage configuration. On February 2nd, 2021, the Starship Serial 9 spacecraft launched about six to seven miles in altitude or about the same or a little less than the serial number eight prototype was lifted to on December 9th, 2020. The craft is the second to sport flaps and a nose cone. Serial number nine follows its predecessors, serial number eight, serial number six, and serial number five, and the Starhopper, which have successfully completed hops at various heights, along with controlled landings. The launch was literally conducted only hours after SpaceX had obtained a launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration. The delayed licensing was an outcome of an FAA investigation into the serial number 8 launch and subsequent crash, which the agency says was conducted in violation of the license that had been granted. Neither the FAA Space Division or SpaceX has been willing to reveal what aspect of the license was violated. Speculation has centered on the launch height, which was reportedly 8 miles or more. Like with serial number 8, Serial number 9 used three Raptor engines to launch the 260,000 pound rocket. All three engines were fired at liftoff, with each shutting down in succession to halt its ascent. Two of the engines were then reignited to reorient the craft in the vertical with the tail down, and then one engine was used to control the descent and landing. The Raptor engines are designed specifically for the Starship. It is anticipated that production Starships will use six Raptor engines, and its Super Heavy booster will use 30 engines. In contrast, the Falcon 9 uses 9 Merlin engines, and the Falcon Heavy uses 27 Merlin engines. The Serial 9 launch is the next action in a series of tests on the Starship design, with several previous static prototypes during ground tests, and one full-size craft during a launch being destroyed in a learning process of trial and error. Let's watch the Serial Number 9 launch and landing in real time. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Starship. As a reminder, this is a test flight to a 10 kilometer altitude. Engine number three shut down on time as planned. We're continuing to climb on two engines. Everything continues to go well with Starship. Good engine performance so far.
down. T plus three minutes, 20 seconds. We've shut down engine two on time. You saw that on the screen just a few seconds ago. Starship now climbing on the power of engine number one, headed to the 10 kilometer altitude. T plus four minutes. Vehicle is at 10 kilometers. It's apogee, it is at apogee. We're continuing to throttle down engine number one to hold altitude. We're preparing for handover on the propellant tank. Four and a half minutes, we are handing off to the LOX tank. We are beginning to flip to horizontal. And the white cloud, the plume you were seeing, was intentional. That is a liquid oxygen dump. We've now transitioned to horizontal and beginning the subsonic test portion of the flight, where we check out the aft and the forward flaps to hold the vehicle stability as we descend back to the landing pad. plus five and a half minutes. Starship continuing the subsonic descent using the forward and aft flaps to control its attitude as we come back down to the landing pad. Everything continuing to go well in this portion of flight. Six minutes, 10 seconds into flight. We're down beneath one and a half kilometers. We're preparing to restart two engines, flip the vehicle vertical, then transition to one engine for the landing burn. At 6 minutes and 17 seconds from launch, serial number 9 shut off one of the two engines used for reorientation, with one final Raptor staying lit in preparation for landing. The Starship came in much too fast, even faster than serial number 8, and not properly oriented, suggesting a failure in gimballing, incorrect engine throttling, or inadequate fuel. Serial number 9 exploded on impact with so much violence, not much was left in terms of wreckage. The serial number 8 wreck was mostly intact, if flattened and twisted. As of the release of this video, Elon Musk had not tweeted his reaction to the flight test. Following the serial number 8 launch and crash, the SpaceX CEO congratulated the engineering team on a successful test. SpaceX is iterating towards a final version of Starship that Musk has said will be capable of carrying up to 100 people to the moon, Mars, and other distant destinations. The 165-foot tall Starship will launch from Earth atop a first-stage booster known as a Super Heavy, which will be powered by two and a half dozen Raptors of its own. The Starship vehicle will be powerful enough to blast itself off the Moon and Mars, whose gravitational poles are much weaker than that of our planet, Musk has said. Both Starship and the forthcoming Super Heavy are designed to be fully and rapidly reusable, a technological breakthrough that SpaceX believes will make ambitious exploration feats, such as Mars colonization, economically feasible. Musk previously said the lifetime of each starship will be around 20 to 30 years, like an aircraft. Around three starship flights will launch from Earth per day, or around 1,000 flights a year. 
and each will have a capacity of more than 90,000 pounds, according to the billionaire. By continuously ferrying the people the 180 million miles to Mars, Musk is predicting 1,000 human inhabitants by 2030, and maybe around 1 million by 2050. SpaceX is currently pursuing a launch license for full-scale, orbital-class Starship Super Heavy vehicles. Musk hopes the spacecraft will be lifted to low Earth orbit by 2021, and have people inside of it by the end of 2022. This would hopefully be followed by a cargo mission to Mars in that same year, return NASA astronauts to the lunar surface in 2024, and even begin sending people to Mars the same year. SpaceX has already booked one Starship customer, Japanese billionaire Yusaku Mizawa, who will fly around the moon on the vehicle. The target launch date for that mission is 2023. Starship is also in the running to land NASA astronauts on the moon as part of the space agency's Artemis program. The Trump administration aimed to put two astronauts down near the lunar south pole in 2024 and establish a sustainable human presence on or around the moon by the end of the decade. The Biden administration has indicated that timetable is too aggressive, and NASA this week put on hold the contract award for a new lunar lander. Starship will fly a wide variety of missions to many different destinations, if all goes according to plan. SpaceX plans to phase out all of its other spaceflight hardware over time, handing all duties over to Starship and its Super Heavy booster. What do you think about SpaceX's Starship Commercial Interplanetary Spacecraft Development Program? Do you think that SpaceX will beat NASA to the moon or Mars? Or are both programs overly optimistic in their aims and scheduling? Share with us by dropping a comment below. We hope you enjoyed this 60 second installment of Belated Tech's Milestone series. If so, click that like button. We hope we have earned your subscription to our channel. If so, and if you have not taken the opportunity to subscribe, please take a moment to do so now and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. We want to continue delivering great content to you. You can always unsubscribe and subscribing is free. Links to some of our most recent episodes can be found in the description section below. You can peruse our entire 200 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which conveniently sort videos by subject. We announce all new videos on our micro blogging accounts, which are listed below, as well as in the community feed for this channel. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to retro tech and innovation documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones. And gameplay recordings can be discovered on the Bladed Tech Gaming channel in videos called Walkthroughs and Side Missions. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed. And finally, join us on our Facebook and Minds pages, where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.